Eric Stoltz and Bridget Fonda have more than a few things in common. They're young, successful, good-looking, and extremely busy. They're also one of Hollywood's most talked-about couples. Eric Stoltz first appeared on the big screen in the teen flick Fast Times at Ridgemont High as Sean Penn's surfer buddy. From there, he went on to earn critical acclaim in the films Mask and The Water Dance. Bridget Fonda is a member of the famous Fonda clan. She won over movie audiences and earned a Golden Globe nomination for Best Supporting Actress in the film Scandal. She recently appeared in Singles, Single White Female, and Point of No Return. Stoltz and Fonda joined forces for Bodies Rest in Motion, which is about four companions in their late 20s searching for fulfillment. I'm sorry, Sid, but you have to find happiness in yourself. No, that's wrong. People tell you that, but, but that's wrong. It's not. It is. I know people who have that, that happiness from within, and that, that happiness, that's just them being pleased with themselves. It's not enough. We met with Eric Stoltz and Bridget Fonda at the Ma Maison Hotel in Los Angeles. To our surprise, it marked the first time in the history of Extreme Close-Up that our conversation incorporated Frederick Nietzsche and Sir Isaac Newton. But don't worry, we also got the scoop on the couple's love life. Did the prospect of working together, did, were you fearful that it would jeopardize your relationship, or were you anticipating working together that that would be a good thing, that would bring you closer together? Well, I wasn't fearful that it would jeopardize the relationship. I think the writer, Roger Hedden, was terrified that we were going to break up during the film and ruin his script. <laughs> his precious script. His work. precious script. Or he was afraid we were going to break up before That's it came right. out. He I was petrified that. about that. I remember that. We weren't, though. You guys, you're happy, right? <laughs> he was always calling up to, to, like, take the temperature of our relationship and make sure we were okay. <laughs> but it turned out to be fine. You're still together yeah, at the end? It was something that I think we looked forward to yeah. as yeah. being something good. Now, I'm sure a lot of people are asking this, but we have to ask, doing love scenes with your own boyfriend, that had have an added incentive, yes? Was it, or did it, uh, or was it more difficult? It was actually a lot easier. I mean, it's a, it's a pleasant change. I, I find that usually you're, you're, you're forced to be polite and you don't know the person and it's awkward and a lot of things that are, you know, the usual things that you hear about it. There's just a lot of people in the room and yada, 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 how unromantic it is. And, and this was really nice. I, I think that we really, we got to cut through a lot of the, the niceties and just really openly at each other. <laughs> They're like, move, I'm getting a cramp. Get off. Okay, up, up, up. Stop giggling. <laughs> now, how about watching it in dailies at the end of the day, watching yourselves do those scenes? Well, I was tricked. I didn't know it was going to be that intimate. <laughs> oh, yeah. Who tricked. tricked you? Who tricked you? Steinberg, the director. The director. <laughs> I didn't know that it was going to look like that. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I didn't know, but it didn't bother me. I, I trusted completely, and I would, I'm, I I'm happy of, with it comes Yeah, out, I thought it was kind know. of erotic, actually. It is erotic, and it's, it's very, it's intimate, which makes me blush, but, you know, it's, that's good. Now, how did you guys first meet? Because you actually met years ago, didn't you? We did. Seven years ago, we met at Paramount Studios. Mm -hmm. We were auditioning for something, and I opened a door, and she was behind the door. And, uh... In door number chair. two. In a chair. <laughs> he has said it crouching in the past. That's not true. In a chair. I was not crouching. I was sitting. Now, did you know chair. who she was? No. And did you know who he was? No. We oh. hadn't uh, really worked. We hadn't really done anything. Mm -hmm. And uh, you had done mask, but I, I wouldn't have been able to recognize oh, right, you from right. that. And I, uh, I followed her, like a silly puppy dog. I followed her out to the parking lot and sort of followed her. I had my motorcycle. Followed her home and asked for her phone number. It was really. Very Silly. audacious. I couldn't eat for weeks. <laughs> it was audacious. Literally. It was a little embarrassing to recount, but... You couldn't eat because you were spooked or because you were... <laughs> she was, was terrified so that terrifying. I was stalking her. <laughs> there was this guy, I can't eat, I feel sick, I'm so nervous. <laughs> no, uh, because I was just, uh, I don't know, just all a flutter. Uh -huh. and nervous and... It was... I was know, eating like a pig, though. He was fine, he was like, <laughs> what's wrong with you? <laughs> Why aren't you eating she, that? I thought she might be anorexic or something. Do you have an eating disorder? And I said, no, no. So you've taken one bite of your sandwich. And that's so, all I could So do. you started going out, but then things didn't work out for you at the time. 
Yes? What happened? I think you moved back to New York and I went off to Europe to do two or three films. And you drifted. She went back to college and, you know, we started going out with other people. Right. So the, it, it was not a, an upsetting split at the time, but then you got back together years later. And how did that happen? How did you rendezvous the second time around? Well, I was at a pool. Let me. <laughs> Michael Caton Jones. The director of Memphis Bell. The director of Memphis Bell and Scandal was calling a house that I was at for another person who was there. I happened to answer the phone. He was caught out, flustered, recovered, and said, oh, oh, why don't you come over? I'm at Eric's. And I said, well, I don't know. Does he want me to come over? And, and Eric got on the phone and said, yeah, sure. Come on, it'd be great to see you. And I then, literally so I, hadn't seen her for we, yeah, we had three years, each other four years, for a long time, yeah. and so then I went over and we became friends. And but I just had to clarify that because he is pretending now that he said that he's like the big matchmaker. I wanted to see the two people I love together. The reality is, is he was calling for Jane Horrocks, who's also on <laughs> Memphis Bell, who wasn't in at the time. And I answered the phone. I said, "I'm sorry, you're going to have to go back to the other movie and talk to me." Pure serendipity, then. Yes. Yes. Okay. So you got together again, and uh, now you're living together. Yes. And what adjustments did you each have to make to living together? <laughs> Two different lifestyles. <laughs> yeah. What's the biggest adjustment? Furniture. Furniture. Nothing to sit on. And I. A lot to sit on. <laughs> I like to sit. I like my feet up. I like to have a table. Uh, I mean, I, I just do. She likes a lot of furniture. And what is it with women that they need furniture? I don't understand. It's that. a nesting instinct. It I is don't a know. nesting instinct. Yeah. I had read that uh, you had not even had a television until you had moved in. Is that true? That's very true. Yeah. Yeah. But now you've made the compromise. You've broken down and... Well, it is a true compromise, although I don't mind it. I think it's easier on me because I really... The only thing that I can't live without with a television is the video because I love renting movies. So we don't have cable or regular television. We just have a monitor for movies. Just so we just have it, yeah. All right. And how about the toughest adjustment to working together? What would that have been? Hmm. I would get very it was cranky easy. When, that was, when I would get hot, which was all the time. So I would be cranky. He says it's easy. You say you got cranky. Well, I'm making apologies. Well, she got, <laughs> she got cranky because she didn't like the heat. But in terms of working together for us, there were no tough adjustments at all. It was, no, there was no really easy. It's pretty smooth. Oh, it was wonderful. Yeah. Next up on Extreme Close-Up, Eric and Bridget's most valuable possession. I'm not a possession. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you are, honey. <laughs> 